Welcome to the World History One Lecture Series. At the end of each slide, there will be a 10 second delay. Use this time to pause the presentation and complete your notes. When you are done, push play and you will move forward. This lecture will begin in five seconds. Welcome to World History One, Lecture 1.1 on Defining Time. And for those freshmen listening to me, welcome to First Colonial High School. My name is Matt Rossettini, and I teach World History One here at FC. My very first question to you is, what is time? I mean, we've been studying history. You've studied history all the way from the beginning of your education. But now, the question really becomes, what is time? How do we measure time? In this class, we're going to be measuring large periods of time. But we can measure your time here on Earth in a matter of years. What about your time in this class? We could measure that in a matter of minutes, if not hours. So what we need to do is we need to define what is time. How do we view it? How do we understand it? And how do we use it? With that said, Go to the next slide. In order to understand what we're talking about in a history class, you have to know about the concept of time. Lucky for you, the concept of time is self-evident. Yeah. An hour consists of a certain number of minutes, a day of hours, and a year of days. In other words, we use time to mark how long we've done something and how long it's going to take to do something. But this idea gets tricky when you combine it with the study of history. You see, the study of history unveils the complexity of human existence in the past and supplies insight into the present and future. What does that mean? Basically, you need to look back at what we did as humans to understand why we're doing the things we're doing right now and what we might do in the future. So, you need to understand the concept of time because that's what we're going to use to organize our study of history. Go to the next slide. History and time aren't the only two things that need to work together. You see, two groups of people are going to come together in order to explain what happened in our past. Group number one are archaeologists. Archaeologists study past cultures and the way people lived based on the things they left behind. As you can see, those folks are digging in the dirt looking for those things. We call them artifacts. Historians research analyze, interpret, and present the past by studying a variety of historical documents and sources. In other words, historians are looking at the books, archaeologists are digging in the ground. Without both of these people working together, we don't know what happened in the past. Go ahead to the next slide. So, now you know that we use time to organize our concepts of history. And you also know that archaeologists and historians are the people studying our past who are going to use time to organize these concepts. Now comes the big question. How does this work? Because we are talking about a tremendous amount of time. We are talking about from right now to about 2 million years ago. That's too much time to look at in one piece. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to split history in two. This is the big split, and it works like this. We have BC, which stands for before Christ, before Jesus Christ was born. That time before Jesus Christ was born is BC. And then we have AD, which stands for Anno Domini, or the year of our Lord. 
So many people get confused about this concept. This is not about when Jesus dies. It's not A.D. after death. It's more like this is the year that Jesus Christ was born. So B.C. is before the year that Jesus Christ was born, and A.D. is the year that Jesus Christ was born, and all the time after that. The big split, B.C. and A.D. Go to the last slide. Wouldn't it be great if we could keep this as simple as B.C. and A.D.? I mean, once you get the concept that B.C. equals before the birth of Jesus Christ, and A.D. or Anno Domine equals the year that Jesus Christ is born and everything after, life is pretty simple. But modern archaeologists and historians also use a different system for tracking time, B.C.E. and C.E. Here's how it works. B.C.E. stands for Before the Common era. And CE stands for the common era. So, well, how does this work? What is the difference between BC and AD? There is no difference. Before common era equals BC. So everything before the birth of Jesus Christ is considered before the common era. Then the common era equals AD or Anno Domini. So everything after the year or everything on or after the year that Jesus Christ is born, that is considered the common era. BCE equals BC. CE equals AD. I hope you enjoyed your first lecture and I look forward to seeing you in class.